Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films back again with Star Wars The Bad Batch. Last time on The Bad Batch, we had Aftermath. Uh, basically picking up from the end of the Clone Wars, literally the absolute end of the Clone Wars, uh, Order 66 went out and we followed The Bad Batch uh, as they tried to manage in the newly formed Galactic Empire, uh, and they weren't getting along too well. Uh, they did not execute Order 66, and uh, because of that, they were tested by Admiral Tarkin to see where their true loyalties lied. Um, uh, however, while most of them did not want to kill innocent civilians, Crosshair was actually uh, perfectly down with it because his chip actually did work. Uh, and so it put them at odds. They also found uh, a young girl at Camino named Omega, and they realized that she was actually an altered clone like the Bad Batch. Um, so they went back, got her, but Crosshair was taken, and his uh, programming basically was supercharged, and he went against the Bad Batch, and they escaped, uh, but they, while they could try to go lay low, they have to be careful with Crosshair gunning for them. And the last we saw was um, they were heading to a planet called J-19, where Hunter says they know someone. So, yeah. All in all, it was a really, really great episode, a great start, and honestly, just so amazing just with the Bad Batch themselves, you know? It was, it was just so amazing to see them carrying their own show. So I'm very excited to see where we're going in this episode. So we should probably just get right into it. So yeah, here we go. The Bat Match. Cut and run. All right, now it's just gray. All right. No more narration. It kind of makes sense. Well, this is She's a child. What are we gonna do with her? This is very Mandalorian. Yeah, coming up on Salukamai. No. Yeah, not a lot of sunlight on Kamino. Or greenery. Or dirt. Whoa. What is this? That would be dirt. Amazing. Man. All this because she stayed on Camino that whole time. <laughs> Probably not a lot of animals on so Camino. This friend of yours. What's he doing all the way out here? Hiding. That's what deserters do. Deserter. Staying off the radar is not our specialty. And he's been doing it for years. Oh, okay. And you trust a deserter? No. Nah. Why not? We're all deserters now. Yeah. Oh, Echo, he's still got a bit of that reg going. More clones who have lost their way. Hey. A while, fellas. Oh, I remember this guy from the Clone Wars, yeah. I see a few new faces. No. Echo and Omega. Cut and Sue. Oh, nice so meet you. the Bad Batch have specifically Ma'am. met him. Rex told us about the clone troopers turning against the Jedi. Oh, okay. You told me, Rex. When? Well, he passed through yesterday. Wow, really? Didn't ask. He was going on about some behavioral implant. Which he doesn't have. The chip. There's a ship outside! Jaya! Jack! Remember me? Oh, oh I like the the bad batch Who have been here. Omega. We never see kids around here. Come with us. Mm. Gotta get permission from Dad. I like immediately Hunter is Dad now. What's the purpose of this? To have fun? Here, you try. Huh? We're well, supposed to catch it. You're supposed to catch yeah. it? Yeah. You're not. Sp oh. They don't play on Camino. All right, out with it. What's with the girl? She's a defective clone, like we are. Not exactly. What do you mean? Well, the Kaminoans don't create without a purpose. No. You all have one, so what's hers? It doesn't matter. We don't really know. She's just a kid. I caught it! 
<laughs> this is really just the Mandalorian now. And I am totally okay with that. Whoa. Is that like a... Like a tow truck? ships about a week ago. Military ships? All ships. Huh. Tagging them inside that impound lot. Those credits won't do you any good without a chain code. New galactic policy. My what? Chain code? Uh, Every citizen can exchange their impound currency for imperial credits. Okay. Thanks to the generosity of the new galactic empire. The war is over. With peace comes opportunity and prosperity for all. And this is like three days after the war ended? Get in line. Get your chain code. And don't make any trouble. Oh, so you can just go get just ships. a chain code. They're registering people, too. Ah. Uh. Getting off planet's gonna be harder than I thought. Yeah. Gonna be hard for two clones to get a chain code. Nice one. It's past the fence. We'll get it later. Check! Don't go past the fence, girl. Careful. Omega! Got it! Omega! Don't move! Ah, animals. I mean, the the rest of the Bad Batch should be... Yeah, they're right there. It appears all public transport is now restricted without chain codes. Which hmm. can't sign up for. He'll be arrested Cut. when they discover he's a deserter. Oh, yeah. The next shuttle leaves in a few hours. Codes are no Cut codes. Cut and run. We need Ah! Hunter's ready to kill. And Ezra, get out of here! Do you realize you could have been killed? Easy. She's not a soldier. Yeah. Are you hurt? Oh, let's take a look here. Oh. I'm sorry. I was trying to get the ball. I don't oh. know. Hunter's got to work on being a dad. Tech, you think you can forge some chain codes? I only learned of them moments ago. But yes. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. We're getting cut, Sue, and the kids on that shuttle. Hmm. I want to make it a go with you. You two can give us something that, that we can't. Well. Oh, yeah. Is that what you really want? This is also like it's the Mandalorian. What she needs. It's ironic. Clones wanted names instead of numbers. Yet now people are signing up to be given numbers. Nah. It's ingenious. You could create a database to identify anyone in the galaxy. You're suggesting we call the authorities and have them seize our ship? No. Nah. That is exactly what I am saying. I guess if they think it's abandoned. That just might work. Yeah. Just hide in there. You did what? <laughs> oh, they didn't tell Hunter that this was happening. I have this under control. There's one big problem. Omega's on the ship. You morons. You didn't think about that? I think it's a good plan, Tick. So much for simple. Maybe you could have waited five seconds before you did this. Go to the security kiosk, Scombian, copy the data, and grab the blank disks from each program. Roger that. Hmm. You know, essentially, the Bad Batch doesn't need a droid because they have Echo. Like, he fills in the droid, uh, the droid role for the team. Where the disks go? And where's Omega? Oh, she went out there. Get the disc to them. She could probably sneak around a lot easier than this great plan of armor. Yours is looking really lousy about now. If something happens to her, like I said, kids always find trouble. No. Yeah. What is taking so long with the boot? Are you trying to get caught? I'm doing my best. You want to come out here and give it a try? Hey, who are you? You don't belong here. I'm uh, the. Maintenance tech. In that funky armor. A situation to face. Ah. No, ah. Whoop. Good job, Wrecker. Where are you going? Uh. Show me a chain coach, citizen. 
Yeah, sure. I got it right here. Oh, right. Must be in this hand. Yes! Oh, hit them all. Good job. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. She's not gonna like this. The extra chain coats for you. So you can leave with Cut and Sue. Why? Did... Did I do something wrong? You need a family, kid. They're good people. They'll give you the life you deserve. But... I want to stay with you. Aww. Nah, come on. Something's gonna happen. Ready? Aww. She might actually go. I don't know. It feels a little early, you know? Because it's only episode two, you'd think she'd be more important to the story. Woo! Good job, Hunter. The system's not responding. Wrecker, break it. Good job. Responded to that. Should have led with that, actually. Omega's not back. Wrecker, she's not. Wait for me. Well, what are you doing back? <laughs> ah, dang it. Is there a problem? You look like. Any reinforcements at the impound dock? Ah, good. A distraction. Carry on. I mean, yeah, it's got a... He looks like them. Alright, but they made it. They made it out of there. Good. Tuh. Oh, Wrecker. I have a lot to learn. But you don't have to get rid of me. I left Camino with you. This is where I want to be. Tell you the truth, kid. <sighs> I guess I've got a lot to learn, too. Yeah. If this is where you want to be, then this is where you'll stay. All right. Alrighty. Okay, episode two. Nothing with Crosshair in this episode, uh, which is pretty interesting. Um, but but a good episode. It definitely definitely gave me some Mandalorian vibes. Um, but it was done well, done differently at least, you know, uh, because you know going to this place to well originally. So what I'm thinking of is The Mandalorian Season 1 Episode 4, where it was just after... Spoilers, I guess, in case you haven't... Slight spoilers, we won't talk too much about it, but it was basically uh, The Mandalorian and uh, the kid were going to... Um, they were going to lay low, ended up getting into some trouble, they had to leave, basically. And in that episode, the Mandalorian was also starting to find himself more as a father to uh, the kid. And, um, and yes, I know the kid's name. I'm trying to avoid as many spoilers as possible in case any of you guys haven't seen it. Um, so he, he does sort of find himself becoming more of a father to the kid. And he does want to try to leave the kid with, you know, nice people that would give him a better life than... Uh, the life that he has, you know? And so that is very similar to this episode where, again, Hunter is finding himself more as a father figure to Omega. Um, now, it's interesting because, you know, you would almost think that the four of them would, but it definitely is more Hunter than anyone else, which is interesting, that they sort of set him apart more as a father figure to Omega. And maybe that is because he's the he is the leader of the Bad Batch, you know? Because he's the leader, that's why he would uh, be more of this, you know, uh, I guess authority figure maybe, or just a father figure to Omega. So, and it's definitely the same thing here where he tries to uh, 
have Omega stay with people who would be better, you know, who would be better for him, or uh, better for her, excuse me. Um, people that would be better for her than, you know, fugitives uh, like the Bad Batch are, you know. But in the end, it doesn't really matter because she goes with him anyway. It, it's a bit of a different reason for why uh, the, you know, these kids end up going with, uh, you know, these, you know, either the Mandalorian or the Bad Batch here. Uh, but still, still very, um, still very similar, which I like that. Um, and that's perfectly fine that this episode is a bit similar to that, but they do different stuff. Like, you know, the conflict and stuff that arises is different. Um, for those of you that have seen that episode of The Mandalorian, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so that's all fine and good. Um, so yeah, I just found that really interesting that it's like, yeah, we are pretty much, you know, for, I mean, this is the first, um, this is the first fully Disney Plus exclusive, uh, Star Wars animated show, um, because, you know, Clone Wars season seven, that was just season seven of the Clone Wars, so, uh, and then, you know, Rebels and Resistance were both on TV, so this is the first time that, you know, an animated show, an animated Star Wars series is exclusive, exclusively airing on Disney+. Plus. So, I just find that interesting that they sort of took, they're sort of taking an approach that's similar to another, you know, basically the other Disney+, Plus, uh, Star Wars exclusive show, you know, which was The Mandalorian, which was also pretty much the first live-action Star Wars show, you know? So I just find that very interesting that they are sort of taking that similar thing of, you know, our, even though the Bad Batch is more of an ensemble, um, it, it is sort of an ensemble because of the nature of the Bad Batch. The leader, Hunter, is sort of taking that same sort of fatherly uh, role to Omega that the Mandalorian takes to the child. So very, very interesting. Uh, hopefully, you know, while, while yes, there were some similarities here, I'd be very curious with, you know, how that's all going to work out. Because the main thing in The Mandalorian, again, without trying to give too much away in case you guys haven't seen it, but the main thing in The Mandalorian was that everyone was trying to get this kid, you know? And so The Mandalorian was trying to keep him safe. This time it is a bit different because no one really knows about Omega and they don't really... Even if they knew, like if Tarkin knew, Tarkin probably wouldn't even think like, oh, well, she's she's just a, you know, a different clone. Like, she, he might not even think too much about that, you know? Now, granted, this is Tarkin we're talking about. He might start to question some things like, well, wait a second. Like Cut said, basically, you know, um, like every clone was made for a purpose. Even, you know, defective clones like the Bad Batch, they were made for a purpose. So what is Omega's purpose, basically? So maybe if Tarkin did find out about her, he might start to question and be like, hey, what was her purpose? What is, you know, what's going on here, you know? So, um, so there's that. But it is more that um, the Empire would basically, the, the Empire, and more specifically Crosshair, is looking for, uh, looking for the Bad Batch because they are fugitives, they're traitors. And so they're just trying to take them out as traitors. They're not specifically looking for uh, Omega, which is interesting. So in that respect, while yes, it is similar, here's our you know main character who's not really a father. He's not really a fatherly kind of guy. He has to figure things out, and suddenly he's you know basically given this child, and he has to protect them, and now kind of has to raise them. I like that it is still different from. Um, it is very different from. Uh, what we got in the Mandalorian, you know, and also just down to the fact that this is a different time period because, you know, that is five years after uh, Return of the Jedi, whereas this is, you know, li like I said, this is like a couple days after the end of the Clone Wars, basically, like this isn't too much longer after uh, the Empire was created. And so not only do they have to like, not only does Hunter basically have to figure out how does he raise this, you know, child who never left Camino and everything and doesn't know how to play and stuff but in some respects is similar to him because they're both you know uh, genetically altered clones um he not only do they have to figure out that 
but they also have to figure out how are they going to survive and even old survival tactics you know old fugitive deserter tactics don't fully work because now you have to adapt everything to the new rules of the empire you know um so i thought all that all of that really does make this uh very different from uh from the mandalorian which is good i'm really glad for that so um okay now i wanted to see who played uh the main kid or not the main kid but uh the son the, the son's voice sounded familiar so i'm gonna look that up really really quickly here if this will load I also, uh, I, I need to look up, was it Michelle Ang, who voices uh, Omega? Oh, hello, wait a second. Well, okay, I, I wouldn't recognize this from the voice, but uh, the, the son, Jack, was apparently played by Mon Mothma from uh, The Clone Wars. I, I mean, I didn't, I, that's not what I heard. I just heard just sort of the voice, basically, the, the, the voice, basically, of a young boy. It, it sounded familiar from like another show but i'm not really seeing anything so the other one michelle michelle ang michelle ong ang ong I don't, I don't know could be either of those uh as omega let me see she kind of sounds familiar too i mean it's good that you know she has a very distinct voice and uh the accent as well the the sort of british accent uh is very it's it, it's strong it, it's it's sort of a strong british accent but that's fine it's at least at the very least you know it's a good change of pace from you know the d bradley baker show which is constant you know with every clone trooper cut and then the four the four members of the bad batch that are good guys as well as crosshair you know, there's so much D. Bradley Baker that it's almost ridiculous. But, uh, but her voice is really good, um, and it, it, it's a good little, it's a good little break from, you know, it, it's a good little break to put in with, you know, every D. Bradley Baker voice. Um, so yeah, um, to sort of go over some of the notes, um, uh, let's see. So we did meet up with Cut. Uh, which was pretty cool, you know, and I like how they say, you know, they basically imply, yeah, the, the Bad Batch have met Cut before, which is interesting, because we only really, I think we only really saw him in that one episode, you know, um, and that was with Rex, um, so that that was really good, just sort of a call back to that, um, so I really like that, and it's a good place to uh, go. Um, it's a good place to go when you're trying to get away, like they said, you know, because basically, like, uh, Tex said, they are basically deserters, you know? Um, I also like how Echo, Echo kind of has a little bit of a problem with him at first, uh, when they were first talking about it, I was like, oh yeah, he, he's, he's a good person to go to because he's a deserter, and Echo is basically like, oh, well, should we trust a deserter? And they basically say, he's like, well, that's what we are now, you know? So uh, I, I like that it's basically uh, a little bit of, you know, original Echo because, you know, of the Bad Batch. Yes, he is a part of the Bad Batch, but that's, because, that's only because of everything that happened on Skako Minor. Um, and he is, he was still born a reg. So I like that you still get a little bit of that reg mindset in there, you know. He is initially distrusting of deserters, but then, you know, pretty much immediately he comes around to it because he has to. So, I like that. Um, and yeah, just bringing in Cut was just very interesting. I also like how they say that uh, Rex had already been by uh, the previous day. Uh, that was very interesting, too. Um, so, presumably... So, I mean, okay, presumably it has been at least a couple days since, uh, since the end of the Clone Wars. But, I mean, on that final day, uh, basically... While, you know, as the Bad Batch returned to Kamino at the beginning of Episode 1 after Order 66, around that time is when Ahsoka and Rex had basically crashed onto that planet and then began the process of burying all those bodies. So, uh, presumably this was a couple days later, and, 
that was the first place that Rex and presumably Rex and Ahsoka went to was uh, was to cut. Um, but he doesn't mention Ahsoka. He only mentions Rex, which is interesting. Um, so I like that. You know, it, it is kind of one of those like I, I do wish you could see basically what happens to Rex and Ahsoka after uh, after the last episode of Clone Wars. Maybe we'll get them. Maybe you know, with that mention, it's quite possible that we could get them at some point. But that could be a little dangerous because you know they're they would basically all be wanted. You know. Um, although the Empire does not know, well, I suppose that's the risk because the Empire doesn't really have confirmation whether or not Rex and Ahsoka died. Um, so if, uh, if the Bad Batch went and saw them and then, you know, maybe Crosshair showed up, that could, well, Crosshair can't confirm that Ahsoka is alive at least. Um, at the very least, the Empire will know that Rex is alive and sort of, you know, uh, leaves Rex, Wolf, and uh, Gregor alone on that planet, as we see in Rebels. Um, I, I, I hope... It, let me know if the comment in the comments if you guys want me to sort of back off on uh, some Rebel spoilers, because we didn't really talk about too much Rebel spoilers last time. You know, we just sort of mentioned uh, Caleb Doom being Kane and Jarrus. Um, but other than that, we really didn't talk about it. Let me guys know if you want me to sort of dial back. Because, I mean, in all fairness, I did just dial back on Mandalorian spoilers. So I'm perfectly fine if if we need to dial back on Rebel spoilers as well. Um, but yeah, so um, it, it, it would, at the very least, it would be dangerous if... Um, it, it would be dangerous if... Uh, the Bad Batch met up with Rex and Ahsoka. But uh, you know I would love to see that, you know? So, yeah. Um, we also had Omega on uh, a new planet, which was interesting. Like, yeah, as soon as she walks out, it's like, yeah, this place, uh, Seleucami, is a lot different from uh, Kamino. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I really did like that. You know, she's sort of walking around and, you know, she sees dirt for the first time and thinks it's amazing. Then she starts playing because, yeah, they're probably... Well, I mean, you would assume that she... Well, obviously, she never she's never played. But um, you would also wonder if maybe she didn't have... I, I guess, presumably, she didn't have any friends at uh, Kamino, like other, you know, young clones uh, who could have potentially been her friend. But if no one knew that she was a clone and they just thought she was... Uh, was it Nalase's assistant? Then presumably like she stayed away from everyone you know um which is why she was naturally gravitated towards the bad batch because they were different among the clones and she was different among the people of Camino, you know other than the kaminoans so so yeah so all of that was interesting um again i still feel like we're in like the first we're within the first week of um, we're still within the first week of the Empire being formed, and immediately we've swapped over to Imperial credits and everything. You know, it is one of those interesting things, like, you know, they set up, uh, they set up the Empire, but was Palpatine planning on that? I mean, I guess so. It's one of those things, like, what was the exact plan that Palpatine had, you know? Because, I, I guess as soon as... I guess as soon as um, the war was over, he was going to use Order 66 no matter what. But it worked out that, uh, you know, the Jedi basically tried to arrest him. Therefore, he could have a reason why the Jedi were traitors, you know? Because otherwise, like, what would the excuse have been? So, but presumably they had... Presumably they had plans like you know people who are in on on the plan basically who were devising new things for um for the empire such as you know creating a new military like the stormtroopers and disbanding uh the clone army and then now with the imperial credits and the chain code like everything becoming more restrictive like this is all happening within the first week. Like, they are getting to work, you know. This is one of those, like, you know, when you get a new president and they start signing executive orders day one, like, boom, 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 we've got a lot of stuff that we are going through immediately, you know. Um, and it's hilarious because 
it's not like there's a new administration. It's the same guy, you know? It's the same guy, the, the guy who uh, basically ruled the Republic now rules the Empire. And so it's just sort of interesting just how fast these changes are being thought and implemented, you know? Um, but yeah, we have the Imperial credits uh, because old credits no longer work. And you also need a chain code. Um, I also like how uh, Echo says, you know, clones... Basically, clones wanted names instead of numbers. Now people are signing up for numbers, you know? It's just crazy. Um, and I like tech being, you know, sort of being impressed by uh, the whole system and stuff. Like, it, it's just very interesting to see. Um, and that's the other thing with uh, with the clones, that, um, that pretty much all clones now are only wearing the pure white uh, armor. None of them really have any distinct armor anymore, which is interesting. Um... So, yeah, I mean, it's basically just the next step into the Stormtroopers that we'll see. Um, so, basically, like, all of their individualism, uh, individuality has just been completely taken away by Order 66, you know? Um, let's see. We had, uh, again, Hunter becoming more of a father figure to Omega, which is interesting. Again, I'll be interested to see how that sort of goes about, which, I mean... I guess, you know, saying like, oh, it's very similar to The Mandalorian, you could also say that's very similar to Rebels. And again, without getting uh, too much into that in case any of you guys haven't seen it, but uh, on Rebels, pretty much as soon as you meet the crew, uh, you can tell there is a family dynamic. You know, Kanan and Hera are more of the parents, and, you know, uh, Ezra... Ezra and Zeb are sort of brothers, and then Sabine would be the sister, and you've got the family pet with Chopper. Uh, so there's such a family dynamic on that, but to then see that, you know, become the Mandalorian and the child, and now to sort of see that again with uh, Hunter and Omega is just very interesting, you know? But again, you could also say that maybe that even goes back to the Clone Wars when we had... Um, definitely more of a sibling dynamic between, uh, Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Ahsoka, you know? Like, all of them, they were pretty much each other's siblings while also being their masters, you know? So, um, so yeah, I guess it is just sort of that sibling family dynamic that, honestly, let's face it, exists in a lot of Star Wars, pretty much since the beginning with... You know, Luke, Han, and Chewie, and Leia, and all of them, like, uh, C-3PO and R2, like, that sort of family dynamic has always been there. It's just, I don't want to say, like, it's gotten more obvious, but you can so much, you can very much see it very easily between Hunter and Omega, even more than the, you know, the the other three and Omega. It, it really is more of a a parent-child sort of dynamic between Hunter and Omega. And I like it, you know? It's all really good, so. Uh, we had the impound plan. It's interesting that Tech didn't even talk about it, basically. He just like, yeah, we're, we're going to get impounded and get the chain codes, and there you go. That's just what we're going to be doing. And it's like, they didn't even check to see if anyone else was on board the ship. They didn't They didn't tell the plan. It's so, uh, so, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting, but it was still an interesting plan. Um, also, you know, you kind of from the beginning you sort of wonder like okay so what is what is the difference between echo and tech because tech obviously he's the tech guy but echo sort of does that as well so what exactly like you kind of sit here it's like okay because echo's the new one what exactly is echo's purpose and now i understand echo is basically their droid you know it's if the it's if basically the team droid was also a clone you know so that's interesting, and I hope they use... I'll be interested to see how they use that going forward, because, yeah, pretty much every Star Wars team has a droid of some kind, you know, whether it's R2 or Chopper or BB-8, you know, there's always a droid. So I like the idea that the Bad Batch doesn't have a droid, but they have Echo, and Echo can go in and do the stuff that a droid normally would, you know? So I'll be interested to see uh, how that goes. Uh, we had the transport. I'm glad Cut and the family did manage to uh, get on board. I, I like that there was that one clone who was like, hey, you kind of look like... But then he got distracted and uh, and Cut was able to uh, get out of there. So I'm glad the family got out of there uh, safe and sound. And um, if we never see them again, I'm, I'm kind of all right with that. You know, I just... I want to believe that they went off and they were able to live happy lives, you know? So... 
uh, so yeah, that would be pretty interesting. And then we had Omega, uh, who was going to have to go with them, which again, you know, it is very similar to that episode of The Mandalorian where, you know, Hunter wants Omega to live a better life, to have a family and not be, you know, not live the life of a fugitive. You know, he's like, oh, that's no life for a child and stuff like that. Um, but she wants, she left Kamino with them. She wants to stay with them. And Hunter accepts that. And I like the the lines of, you know, oh, I know I have a lot to learn, but I want to stay here. And Hunter basically saying, well, I've got a lot to learn. I've got a lot to learn myself. So if you want to stay here, then this is where you're staying. Uh, so I, I really did like that. Um, and yeah, just an, another really good episode uh, here for the Bad Batch. And honestly, I mean, it, it kind of hasn't skipped a beat, you know? Like, you can go from Clone Wars to this and be like, yeah, I'm watching the exact same great show you know it's just so amazing so um honestly between you know clone wars rebels uh mando and this honestly star wars television is really really good man and i don't want to like comment too much about like the movies or anything we don't need to open that can of worms but pretty much most of the star wars television stuff has is just so good and so consistent yeah i've got some problems here and there you know there's some arcs in clone wars that i don't think are that great or you know the first two seasons of rebels while i really do love those seasons yeah sometimes the episodes aren't the greatest you know or most of star wars resistance i just don't really care for um, I just never really got into it. Um, it's not really bad. I just never really got into it. Uh, but for the most part, I would say Star Wars television, like, th this is kind of where I want the series to stay, you know? I'll be curious where the movies go, but this is good. Bad Batch is great. Again, you know, when I was thinking, like, okay, so this is the first animated Star Wars series to be exclusive to Disney+. Plus. It's a Clone Wars spinoff about the Bad Batch, okay i don't i wouldn't have thought of that but okay where are we gonna go with that and this has been really good so um yeah that's basically it we'll see you guys next week for episode three so yeah with all that being said i'm alex from seventh hour films and i will see you guys next time take care all right guys thanks for watching this video if you want to watch more of my star wars the bad batch reactions you can click on the playlist you can subscribe if you haven't done that already and be sure you hit that notification bell you can spar me on patreon and follow me on social media links below in the description plus there should be another playlist for my clone wars season 7 reactions if you haven't checked those out see you guys later